Hunters. You know what I'm saying, Simba? Okay, so this morning I actually had a good one not long before I woke up. Okay, so like there was tornadic activity outside and it was uh but there was no tornado, not yet anyway. But there was like tornadic activity and it was raining and lightning and I was in this strange uh house with uh let's see um some of the people were familiar to me like friends and stuff but it was a strange house but it's funny because the floor it was like it was like a cheaply made house and the floor was like walking on a mobile home floor like like very thin floor and um and i've been in mobile homes before so that's where Joel got that from, the flimsy floor. But basically, we just hung out in the big old living room of this house. And like I say, it was just a strange house. I, I don't know what town I was in. It felt like I was in a strange town. And uh, and there was some uh, like romance and stuff in it too. Well, that part was kind of fun. So I had some romance in this scenario. <laughs> And that person was kind of familiar too. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's some romance that was fun and everything. But um, so I, I, when I looked outside, so anyway, the scenario, scenario started off, you know, in inside the house. Sh shut up to it. And then uh, when, when I when I when I knew it was raining and everything, I looked outside and I saw it lightning and stuff. And then like the next thing I know. Like, the freaking living room was filled up about five inches of water. And I was I was just like, wow, you guys are in a flood zone, you know? And, uh, and I had brand new white leather tennis shoes on that I bought. And um, I was like, dang it, my, my shoes are going to get ruined. And then I thought, well, maybe they'll dry out and be okay and everything. But it was a fun experience. Um, it lasted a lot longer than that, but, but yeah, I had bought these white leather shoes and, <laughs> and they got, you know, all waterlogged and crap. And so I figured they would get ruined, you know, and I know why Joe put that in there because I had these leather shoes that was like $200, but I, I, I only paid like $20 for them, like back in 2012 at the, some shoe store down the street. And I left them out in the rain, and they shrunk up real bad, so then I had to throw them away. I guess I shouldn't have left them out there in the rain like that, but they needed to be thrown away anyway. They were old. But, um, so yeah, but it was, it was fun, and the romance part, that was fun too. 
Yeah, I let Tori out last night about 7.30, and she didn't come back till 6 o'clock in the morning. Well, I got up at 3, and I looked out, and I was like, Tori, Tori, and she wasn't there. And then at 6 a.m., boom, she was there, and she ran in. Now, she could have maybe been ready to come in, you know, after 3 a.m., you know, but I went back to bed at 3 a.m. But anyway, so basically, she stayed out from like 7.30 p.m. to like six in the morning she's done that before but not in a long time so I don't want to let her out tonight so that's experience I had this morning and that was pretty fun okay now, now this other funny experience it, it did it last a long time but it was like on the same morning uh that I had that um awesome experience to the paid research facility I, I might do that in a separate video uh, separate video but um but 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 like basically yeah so it was kind of similar as far as the trees and stumps that were all grown up in the street because in that other I thought I heard some cats okay so it was similar to another part, you know, to that, the paid research facility. But anyway, so, uh, so yeah, so like I was, well, I started off in my car, like, and I had, you know, my, way down there at the corner, the street down there, there was like a, a dead end road and, and I've been up that street before. And then you just kind of like curve around to the right. And go past the railroad tracks to get on, you know, the main road or whatever. You know, I've been on my bike up there and my, my car or whatever. But in the scenario, it just started off where I was, you know, I don't know what street that's called. But I was on that road up there. And then I just came driving. Just came driving like this and around like that. Because like I told you, that street, you know, it'll go to the railroad tracks. But that whole street right there. In the scenario, it's like I drove down the wrong street and it was nothing but stumps and like hay, you know, in the all in the middle of the road. It was all grown up of hay, you know, that grass starts looking like hay or whatever when it gets real tall and stumps, tree stumps. It was all in, it was basically, well, basically it wasn't a road. It was just all you know, all foresty area that had been, you know, a lot of the trees had been cut down and stuff. And I know where Joe got that idea too, because when you're going down Lone Pine, you know, uh, south, and then you look over to the left, there's that one big area right there. It, it almost looks like they could almost like put a road or something in there, but I, I don't know if they ever will. But, and that, it used to be more woodsy, but it's kind of like they cleared it out, you know, but it's still nothing but grass and tall grass and tree stumps and shit in that area. And I know that's kind of where Joel got that idea. So anyway, so, and I thought, oh my God. So I was trying to drive around the stumps and everything and my car was getting stuck. And then the next thing I know, I'm on my bicycle and I'm, um, well, I could drive, I could, okay, where's the pin? Ugh. Goddamn pin, you need me. Uh, 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 okay, let's see, where's my big piece of paper at? Let me... Okay, let's see. Ah, uh, okay, this may be a big piece of paper. Tor, I don't want to let you out, because, like, I don't want you to be out that long. So I was coming off this road over here, which, you know, it's a, it's a neighborhood and it dead ends all up in here because it's all houses. And so I was coming around in my car, you know, to go down there. <laughs> and that's where it was all tree stumps and everything. And then I realized, you know, I got stuck in my car and I realized I went down the wrong road. So this other road right here, 
that's the road that I needed to, to, to be down. This one, not that one. And so then the next thing I know, after I got stuck and stuff, I hopped on my, my I hopped on my bicycle and then I was riding back up this direction. And then I looked over here and I saw my neighbor that I had met a couple of years ago. He came to talk to me or whatever. During COVID, I think it was. I saw my neighbor over here, like in his car, and I thought he was gonna like maybe like like get out to, to you know to 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 help me or whatever. But I didn't really need help because I was riding my bicycle just fine all through that really thick grass and stuff. And in real life, that would have been hard to do. But I was I hopped on my bicycle and I was riding up this way, and I saw my neighbor coming up this direction on the road that I should have been down. My neighbor lives over there, a few houses down. And, uh, but yeah, so that, that, uh, that was kind of funny, but that was on that same day where, um, Joe gave me that other awesome, the same morning where he gave me the other awesome experience, which was really, really long, really, really fun. And it was very, very vivid. I didn't forget any parts of that scenario. Um, um, you know, to the paid medical research facility. And that was about a week ago. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Okay, and then uh Okay, yeah, and this was just a couple of days ago. Okay, so the scenario started off that I was like I was just inside a grocery store and it felt oh, it was awesome. I don't know what town I was in or, or anything like that. It just felt like a different dimension. It was awesome, and I've had millions of experiences like this too, you know, hanging out in a grocery store for hours and hours and hours and hours, but anyway, anyway, I was at this grocery store, shopping, just hanging out, walking around, going to get food, and then going back to the end of the store, sitting down with all my friends, and there would all, there would be all, you know, uh, the freezer cases right there and everything, and there were tables right there, and that lasted a long, 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 long time. And I'd get up, you know, several times, get some more food and then get back down and uh, sit back down and eat it or whatever. But it was like such a blast. And I was hanging out with some female friends and my sister. As far as I remember, Angie was in it. My friend Angie. Okay, and then here's all the funny part. Okay, but that part went on for a long, long time. Just like if you go to a restaurant restaurant right now and you just sit there and you hang out with friends and then you know like you know t two hours goes by but in this scenario it was more like you know five hours doing that you know getting up shopping sitting back down you know talking to my friends and stuff and uh getting some food and then sit back down eating it and then getting back up and shopping and get some more food and stuff like that that went on for a long, long, long time. Okay, then all of a sudden, for whatever reason, I went over to like the big picture windows or whatever they're called, the big windows of the uh, store, the grocery store, and I looked outside, and um, all of a sudden, there was this um, like maybe 30-year-old woman that... Um, um, anyway, I got the impression that she worked for the military, either directly or indirectly. And she was uh, basically in an anti-gravity bodysuit, a black anti-gravity bodysuit with this freaking out-of-this-world helmet on. And she was just sitting there. I wish she wasn't sitting there. She was just flying there upright, totally flying upright, just zooming around upright just like as if you're standing in midair. She started just like zooming around, zooming around, zooming around, you know, in the sky, but pretty, she was pretty low. You know, by the time I saw her, saw her and everything, she was pretty um, low, you know, like, like uh, 30, 40 feet high, you know, you know, like, like, like zipping around in the, in the sky, so to speak, or in the air, so to speak. And she had this dark, she was basically like, 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 it wasn't levitation, but you know, it was, she had some kind of anti-gravity bodysuit on and she literally was just 
instead of traveling by car or bicycle or train or plane or whatever, she literally was traveling, you know, to the grocery store with that anti-gravity bodysuit on. And um, that was really cool. And then she just kind of zoomed right down on the floor in the middle of the store, like in front of our tables and everything. And then that's when she, she, I saw her take her helmet off and then she set it down. And that's when I was like, wow, that's like out of this world helmet. I mean, it was, it looked, uh, you know, I mean, it looks similar to like some of these cool, you know, like like motorcycle helmets you see, but it was still more out of this world than that. And it also had some kind of technology in it to help her fly around, you know, anti-gravity wise. And, uh, let me find it. I thought I, oh, where's it at? Oh, here we go. But yeah, it was like out of this world helmet. Kind of similar to like a really cool motorcycle helmet. Uh, you know, something cool, kind of like that. And of course, a bodysuit. I can't really find any pictures of what the black bodysuit would have looked like, but it would have looked, you know, similar to something like that. Except, uh, it was black, blackish, you know, or charcoal color, not, not brown like that or whatever color that is, but it was like so cool. And also, um, so in the experience, well, I had, I had just been playing with my drone, you know, a little bit outside my teeny tiny one and I hadn't played with, played with it a long time. I need to get my other ones out, but, um. And um, anyway, so in the experience, when I saw that, when I saw that she had some kind of anti-gravity suit on or whatever, I I started thinking about, like in the scenario, I started thinking about my drone. And, you know, because the drone is, you, you know, well, actually, um, the, well, you know, it's still got to be powered, like, by, by battery. So in the scenario, I was just kind of thinking how that's, what she had on really isn't like any different than a drone. It's just that she would have to have more batteries and stuff on her to float around like that. And yeah. And well, even in this dimension, I'm thinking, why can't something like that be developed? You know, like, why can't that be developed? A bodysuit with a bunch and you'd have a bunch of little batteries on you and you'd be able to zip around like a drone. Why would, why would you not be able to do that? Um, I mean, I've had thoughts like that before. So maybe that's why Joe put that in here. And so I started, but like, but like I say, so when I saw her with the anti-gravity suit on and stuff like that, I immediately, you know, started thinking about drones and stuff. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but here's the funny part. So, um, okay, let me make sure I said everything. And like I say, she either worked for the military directly or indirectly. Levitation technology or anti-gravity technology in place of And anyway, I already told you about that. I knew that the, the bodysuit as well as the big old helmet had some you know batteries and stuff in it, technology and stuff to help her whip around like that off the ground and stuff. Okay, now here's the funny part. I just want to make sure I said everything. So after I saw her, you know, uh, set herself down upright, and like I said, she was just flying around upright, not like, uh, you know, like astral traveling, like on your stomach or whatever. She was flying around totally upright, like that space dude right there. Except it wasn't like she was in space or anything. She was just in regular, you know, on, you know, non-space just like I am now or whatever but she was just zipping around totally upright and so after I saw her take off her helmet and everything it, I was all excited you know seeing her bodysuit and the helmet and everything and 
and so after that, my, my, like my sister was, um, well, here's um, the woman, the, the military woman right here. Here's the military woman. And then, and then my sister was kind of like standing over here. And, uh, let's see, where was I standing? Uh, well, anyway, I was just kind of like standing right here or whatever. And I started kind of like walking fast toward my sister. And I said, I said, see, I told you, I told you, I knew the government had that technology. I knew it. I knew it. And, um, like, it was just funny because I told her that I knew the government had that technology to do that and blah, 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 blah to, you know, design a bodysuit like that. And anyway, um, so that part was kind of funny because I was all excited and I was like, see, I told you, I told you, I told you, I knew the government had that technology, you know, to be able to do that and blah, 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 blah. You know, the anti-gravity bodysuit or whatever it's called. I think drones are considered anti-gravity, I think. But anyway, uh, but yeah, why couldn't they have something like that? Um, you know what I mean? I mean, well, they already have uh, all electric cars. Well, of course, they can't take off the ground. Well, 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 well the alien showed me this one, uh, this one cool. Um, back several years ago, they <laughs> they gave me this, the, the, uh, you know, like in my dream state or whatever, virtual reality scenario, where they showed me all this cool stuff. That that vehicle that could fly, it could float. It was really cool. You know, it could go underwater. But I could, if I could find that video, I could put it in this video. In the link or whatever. Or in the description or whatever. But anyway, so that was a pretty cool experience. And then, uh... Because I just... I don't know, it was just funny. Because... So maybe... I don't know, maybe the government has a bodysuit like that or something where they could really do that. I don't know. Like, not in space, but just like right here and now. You put it on, and you just float around. You just zip around upright. You know what I'm saying? Like, why wouldn't... Why wouldn't that... That wouldn't be hard to design. I mean, it would have to have a lot of batteries. And, well, of course, it might, you know, just like a drone, you know, might only last seven minutes, a little bitty battery, you know, it might, until they get better and better with it, it may only last, you know, 30 minutes to zip around or whatever, I don't know, but, you know, why couldn't they have something like that if they already have drones and shit, you know what I mean, why couldn't you put something on your body and then you just zip, zip the hell around, that would be a fucking blast, you know, I'm sure it would be expensive at first, Oh, okay, so then, um, one or two breaths. Okay, this was on September 15th. What's the date? Oh, this was on September 15th. This was just two days ago. Was that on Friday? Thir no, Thursday, I guess it was. Thursday. So, um, uh, yeah, so this other, um, experience... Wait, hold on. The other one. Oh, okay. The other experience um, on September 15th, I, I was sitting there at Olive Garden in Texas with my Texas relatives, like my aunt and uncle, and my whole family was in it, like my mom, dad, sister, uh, and mom, dad, sister, and brother, and me, we were all in it. And it was, you know, a pretty big table. And my grandma was in it. I mean, it was a big, long table that we were sitting at at the Olive Garden. And then just a bunch of people sitting over here, a bunch of people sitting over there. And, uh, and we were in Texas. And, um, and of course, I have sat at an Olive Garden in Texas before because I used to live in Austin. So I was sitting there with relatives and everything, but it doesn't matter because Joel could still give me an experience that I've never done before if he wants to. But anyway, so I was sitting there with relatives and everything and my family 
And, we, and this lasted a long, long, long time, too. And, uh, and my sister started getting, like, antsy, and she said, we need to hurry up and get our food fast. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Anyway, she for, for whatever reason, she wanted to hurry up and get out of there. So she said, we, we need to hurry up and get our food so we could eat, and then she could leave real fast and everything. Okay, and so she was trying to rush us or whatever. Then all of a sudden, I got up to go to the bathroom. Now, this is already after we sat there for a long, 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 long time, looking at the menus and talking and everything. I finally got up and went to the bathroom. And then uh, I came back. Okay, hold on. I'm sitting there. Mostly. Uh. Oh, 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 hold on. This is just mumble jumble, but I need to say it like the proper order. Okay, so anyway, uh, so, so yeah, so, so basically she was trying to ru rush us. And she said, let's hurry up and get our food. Okay, so then the waitress came and man, she sat down all these platters of food. And a lot of it was like red sauces, like spaghetti and stuff like that. Okay, hold on, make sure I was right about that. Came back, dishes already cleared off, sauces. Yeah, but most all of them that I saw were like red dishes, like spaghetti or lasagna, and ah, oh, it looks so good. So the waitress came and sat down all these platters of food, and this was all very vivid. And so I was looking at everything, and my sister, it was after they, she, you know, the, the waitress placed down, the female waitress placed down all these dishes of food. Then all of a sudden my sister was like, come on, we gotta hurry up, blah, 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 blah. And she does that shit in real life, too. Tries to rush me and everything. Okay, so uh, then after she sat down all the platters of food and I was about to pig out on lots of them, I got up and went to the bathroom. And then when I came back, everything had already been cleared off and I wasn't even able to eat anything yet. And so I hollered for the waitress and I said, you know, come over here. And I told her that I wasn't done eating and that I hadn't eaten anything yet. And so she brought me like a, uh, okay, like a seven inch by four inch dish uh, with aluminum foil on the top. And it was like six to seven breadsticks in there. They were so fresh. And so I lifted off the aluminum foil and started eating. I, ate, I sat there and ate at least five out of the seven breadsticks. And, oh my God, they were like so yummy. Okay, hold on. Let me make sure I said everything. Yeah, for whatever reason, I especially wanted the breadsticks. So I told her to at least bring me back the breadsticks because all the other dishes had already been taken off the table. And I hadn't even been able to eat any of it because I went off to go to the bathroom and I came back and everything was gone. And so I told the waitress that I wanted the breadsticks. So she brought me the breadsticks. And I sat there and literally ate four to five breadsticks out of the seven breadsticks. Okay, let me make sure I said everything. But then I remember having a conversation, like, like, because um, I remember talking to my sister or relatives or something, and I said something about, well, after all, we are in Texas. Something about that. And then um, I'm not sure we, we were we were going to go after the restaurant, but I think we were just going to go back to John and Elaine's, my aunt and uncle's house, John and Elaine, to visit. And I, I don't know, for, for whatever reason, my sister wanted to hurry and get back to their house. But anyway, let me make sure I said everything. Yeah, so like I say, the dishes were already cleared off by the time I got back from the bathroom. And they're always, the aliens are always doing that. They're always doing real honorary stuff like that. Five breasts. I told the waitress, my sister, I hadn't eaten yet. So I eventually wanted to break. Okay, yeah, so I already said everything. Because I just try to jot these down real slop sloppily. But yeah, it was a fun experience. And I've had tons of experiences like that in a restaurant but the aliens are always doing honorary stuff like that like uh 
like, oh, you're about to eat this awesome stuff, and then, boom, you never get to eat it. Well, a lot of times I do get to eat it, but you know what I mean. And, like, a lot of, a lot of times I'll be, like, playing soccer or playing softball, and it's like, ugh, you can't kick the soccer ball. You're trying to kick the ball, and you can't kick it. It's like lo lo like low gravity, like low gravity, you know, scenario or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of funny. But yeah, that one experience this morning, it was kind of fun because it was kind of, um, I kind of, it was kind of sexual and there's some romance in that scenario, but that was fun. The one I had this morning in the strange house with the flood, the flooded, the flooded, like, like living room, flooded, like almost five, six inches of water. But yeah, they were all fun. But yeah, so the other scenario, I'm going to do it separately. The one... Cause that was a blast, man. That one was fun. It was very vivid. It was very, very fun. It was very long. And that was um, when I was in the paid research medical facility. But I'll talk about that later in, in the second video. But thanks for listening.